Well, greetings, viewers, and thanks for joining me in the shop today. Tundra over here going to get some attention. I use this beast for work all the time. I had it in. There's Blanche, my new potential shop dog. She'll come back by in a minute. Um, had it in for regular maintenance, air filter, oil change, wiper blades, all that kind of good stuff that it needed. Um, recently, I had put these 33s on. They work really well with just a, a quarter inch spacer to clear the Tundra brake, but I really like these 33s on there. They do kill my gas mileage a tiny bit when towing, but not a big issue. Why I've got the light underneath it today, this carrier bearing, um, center support bearing, whatever you want to call it, needs replaced. I like to go genuine Toyota when possible. This is a $300 part from Toyota. The uh, generic fake Toyota one that you can get on eBay is $168. This one was from Parts Geek. It was $60. Uh, it is meets or exceeds OEM standards according to them, and it uses the original Timken parts. It's the only one I found that had the little hooks like the original Toyota one. Uh, it comes with a year warranty, so I'm going to give it a try. This truck's always towing or hauling. I noticed just recently some slop in the drive line and realized that uh, when I was inspecting things that my carrier bearing is gone. So I'm going to crawl under there, show you what needs to come apart. This is Blanche, potentially my new shop dog. She's on a foster to adopt program. And if she likes me as much as I like her, she's going to be my new shop dog. This is her day one out here. See how it goes. Uh, she's getting along with my other dog and all the cats. So, uh, so far, so good. Hopefully, you'll be seeing a lot more of Blanche. But anyway, I'm going to get my uh, camera set up and get under there and get started. Okay, under the truck now, this is the old part. Uh, it appears as though it has been replaced once before. That's not the original Toyota piece that's up there. Um, this will unbolt this rear half of the drive shaft because this is a two-piece shaft. I can compress it back and drop this. I'll take these bolts out. I have to take the drive shaft off from the front. Those are all 14s. These look like 17s. And then once I get it out, I'll inspect all the U-joints, take this over to the press and press that out. I'm going to go gather up some tools, and then we'll get started. I should probably show you why I'm replacing it before I do that. Sometimes I just get ahead of myself. This is supposed to suspend this bearing in the center. You can see here that slop. If I can get under it here, you can really see it, how much slop that's got going up and down. That should not move at all. And you can see here, kind of-ish. How it's uh, not in the middle anymore it's all drooped down at the bottom that's what's wrong so that's why it's getting changed let me grab my stuff okay and if you said that's a 14 dumbass not a 17 I meant 14 I don't know what I was thinking 17 on my mind but anyway I'm gonna try and get all this stuff down in a park that's probably really loud but that's pretty rusty uh, I'll impact these off take this apart here might even do that first uh, be easier I'm going to jack the rear of the truck up and put it in neutral so I can spin the drive shaft as I go around and do that and get this down real quick okay I can't get an impact in here obviously to to reach these I like these wrenches that are flat or twist wrenches I put one on facing with the towards the truck Put the other one on the same way, puts the flats of them close together, and then you can grab with both hands and squeeze and get those broke loose. <laughs> I just jacked the truck up. I'm old man, it's cold. Forgive me for being out of breath there for just a second. Honestly, I exercise. <laughs> um, but anyway, don't go the wrong way like I'm going right now. That's a good way to get those, especially when your drive shaft is loose, where it'll turn. Just again, put them on there like that. Give you a little bit of room between them. Give it a good squeeze. <clears throat> and there you go. That's a good way 
to break those loose. Really like these twist wrenches. They're awesome. Okay, I got all those bolts out. Now I labeled where I'm getting ready to take this um, cardon joint loose from this flange. I labeled it. It's important that your drive line go back together the way you take it out. It's balanced to go together a certain way. Now, whether this would make a difference or not, I can't say, but no sense in chancing it. Um, your yoke, like the flat part of your yoke, needs to be lined up with the flat part of this end of the drive shaft. So when you put that slip yoke in, see how it's on the bottom, as well as this, that's important. One way to tell on a Toyota drive shaft, when they build it, they put all the grease zerks pointing the same way on every end. So when I put this drive shaft back together, if I was in question, I just lined up my grease zerks in my slip yoke, my U-joint, up here in my cardon joint, and up there in my U-joint. Because when they put them together, they line that up, makes it easy for maintenance, and it's easy to tell. So I got all these out, going to pull these down, take the front part out, inspect all my u-joints then i'll take this over to the press and get that bearing changed okay now i've got that loose and down on the ground i checked the uh, u-joints i'm going to go ahead and lube it all too as i put it back together uh, but you know to check the play just grab your joint and give it a little wiggle you'll find out if it's got any play in it seriously they'll grab uh, both ends the slip yoke and the diff end try to wiggle them See if they move free. If they're bound up, grease them, or uh, they could be going bad, but these move free. They should have zero excess play in them, so if you notice any excess play, time to replace it while you got it apart. So far, so good on the back half. Let me drop this front half. Now, those two center support bolts that held that bearing up into this spot right here were rusty as anything. If you don't have an impact, go through and spray things. You can even spray them if you do have an impact. It don't really matter, but uh, it'd probably make it come apart a little easier. This thing's completely whooped, no question about it. But now if you drop that in, you can see up there you get enough angle that you can get an impact up there and take those off. Those are on studs, not nuts, or not uh, nut and bolt. They're just nuts on studs. So I have that out here in just a sec. Being able to get up in here with my impact, it was easy enough, but I had to have an extension on it. If you have to have an extension and you notice it's shaking real hard and not breaking loose, really bear down on your gun and try to keep the vibration down. That'll help break it loose. You're not supposed to use an extension. Also not supposed to use chrome sockets, but I do both. Do at your own risk, but if you have to use an extension and your impact is vibrating, just really bear down on it. That helps put the, you know, the beating of the impact on the bolt knot into the gun, and you'll get them loose. Just a little tip. Okay, I got this out. Now, there's my marks I put on under the truck. I carried them down into the middle there, just so I could kind of follow through. I also put them on the shaft. That's a little overdoing it perhaps, but I want to get everything back because this truck was just smooth as anything down the road, and I know those tires are good. Uh, there's a 24 on the end down here. I'm going to use my impact and take that off. This is a stake nut. You can see that notch and where the nut's been beat down into it. The impact will break that loose. You can do it with a ratchet and a lever if you don't have an impact but once you get that put back together you restake that now in theory use a different nut but if you get it on there right you'll get the opposite side of it well i'm kind of baffled here i uh took my nut off took the washer off this just slid off a couple taps pulled it right off that's uh where the little rubber thing around the New bearing, or this little dust cap here rides. So not really an important part, it's just a dust cap to keep things out of this bearing. But when I uh, went to take it off, the whole dang thing just pulled off of there. So apparently, the bolt is all that holds it on. 
and it just slid right off. So I'm going to see, I'll put the new one on. If it just pushes right on, then, you know, we're golden and it's a reassembly. I thought I was going to have to use the press. So let me see if the new one just slides right back on here and uh, we may just be amazed. Who knows? Well, you may not be, but I am because I figured this was going to take a while longer. So there's not a front or back on this. It's equal on both ends. I'm going to jump under the truck with it here real quick and see if it matters via those hangers. Nope, it doesn't make any difference. It's a 50-50 split either way. And it would appear as though this just is going to push in and the bolt holds it. So that's even better. You don't need a press. It's just the first one I've ever changed that didn't need a press. It's also the first vehicle I've had in a long time that even had a carrier bearing. So or center support bearing. So I'm just going to clean up these surfaces like so. Probably couldn't see any of that. I'm going to put this bearing on this way because that's the way I decided I wanted it on because it doesn't seem to matter one way or the other. Line up my... And you're going to be able to get it so close you can tell if it's one tooth off like that. When I sight down my little line my little marks I lined up. So simple as that. Put your nut and bolt back in and stake it. Hang on, we'll run that in. I'll show you what I mean by staking it. Okay, now what I was saying when you can run the bolt in or the nut on and get the old staked part on the opposite. If you ever look at the threads of a nut and a bolt, there's two sets. There's a start thread on one side and another and then inside the nut there's a start thread on one side and the other. So if you run it up and it's going to hit over there again, take it off and real easy, run it a quarter or a half a turn around and start it again, and it'll end up opposite. See, there's my old stake. There's my new stake. And I'm going to set it up and show you how to stake it, I think. Okay, so there's the notch. It's pretty simple. Just take you a punch. It can either have a round end or a blunt end. This is on a rickety counter, so when I hit this, the camera's going to go everywhere. We just smack it like that. And bring her back and strike her a second time, if necessary. See how it's pushed that in? It's kind of like a lock washer keeps that from coming off. So less drama than I thought. I don't think you need to see me put it all back together. That's uh, as simple as changing the carrier bearing on the Tundra. Uh, really liking the 33s, like I said, very happy with that. Came home to this in my driveway the other day. <laughs> Try explaining that one to the mailman. Uh, this is the Y pipe for the LS400. Now, sadly, my wife was in an accident earlier this week. She is perfectly fine, but her car was totaled, so she has adopted the LS400 until we get our money back from the settlement on her car so when that comes back i'll be doing that got a little bit more coming up on the tundra you know there's going to be more third gen stuff stick around yeah go crazy you know me appreciate you like subscribe check out the links there's a link to my son-in-law's band uh they're awesome i'm going to try to get some of their music maybe play on my show so appreciate y'all as always thanks for listening thanks for tuning in have a great day